has a full-time job working for you. You guys ever heard oh, of yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So um, I worked as a health coach for them, and now I am the performance coordinator for all the health coaches there. So I teach them how to like. I teach the health health coaches how to teach people to lose weight. And when I started this job, I was actually coaching at Lombard and was like shoot, I should be using these questioning techniques on my kids. And what happened when I did that was I, come on in, come on in, you're good. <laughs> we just started, we're just doing some intros. We're just doing some intros. Here, we're going to just kind of walk through this guy. Thank you. Um, like I was just saying, and I'm just going to be pretty informal because it is a pretty small group. But, um, yeah, so what we do at the company that I work for is we do motivational interviewing to create behavior change and weight loss. And so when I started, like, finding the ties in gymnastics, it was, like, one of those things that, like, changed the way that my kids operated at practice. And it was almost like I gave them the job to coach themselves and didn't have to do much. <laughs> um, so I'm going to kind of give you guys some examples on, like, how we did that, how we went through that. Come on in. Oh, sweet. So one of the reasons I started doing this is because I knew I actually wasn't going to be coaching this year. I knew I was going to be stepping away from coaching, and I wanted to make sure my kids were in this, like, really good space that, like, no matter who walked in, they, they knew what to do themselves and knew how to coach themselves. And it really, like, inspired me by the work I was doing, but then also I thought about my senior year of gymnastics. I, Carlos was my coach in the off season, and I'm not your typical gymnast. Like... And so what we had to do is we had to sit and analyze my gymnastics and learn different gymnastics for myself than anybody else. And getting that time for me to explore what I do differently from a four foot ten kid, like really inspired me to be a coach. And that's what inspired me to get these kids to start looking at their own gymnastics as their own independent thing. And when I started doing oh, this, like no, I said, Gymnasts were giving themselves corrections okay. before I could give them corrections. Um, the corrections were actually getting corrected more often. Um, and the biggest change actually was fear was not a thing on my team anymore. Um, kids were not scared to try new skills. Kids were not scared. I was not dealing with mental blocks at all because they were coaching themselves. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the page. But I think of like the role of a coach in like two different ways. You could either be the mechanic or you can be the gardener, okay? When you think about what a mechanic does, they go in, they're given the problem, they physically go in and fix it, right? The gardener plants something and waits for it to grow, adds a little water, sees how it do, it's doing, and kind of tests constantly just fostering a growth. And that's the role that I kind of took on when I started doing these questionings is like, I'm not going to fix their gymnastics. I'm going to foster them to grow on their own to fix their gymnastics. So you do this through, um, there's a lot of studies on this thing called BORS. Um, it's just strategies on how to question and how to um, just get through to other people to create that behavior change. And ORS stands for open-ended questioning, affirmations, reflections, and summaries. So what I found myself using the most in this kind of motivational interviewing strategy system is affirmations and reflections. So we're gonna kind of like practice those together today and um, see, how that, see how that goes. So I'm gonna talk about reflections first. So reflections is this like skill that you develop in like understanding like what each person's personal brand is, right? So like I said, one of the things that was so special about mine and Carlos's coach to athlete like experience was that he knew that I had different gymnastics from everybody else. And then if you take that in a further context, every single gymnast does their stuff differently. As much as we'd like everything to be in this line of perfection and streamlinedness, um, every single kid thinks about gymnastics differently, is going to approach gymnastics differently and in their own individual way. So reflections help you like learn that about each kid and helps them learn it about themselves. And it aims to like dig deeper into what an issue is, instead of just saying, the issue is this. We dig deeper into why the issue is happening when we do a reflection. So questions that like, instead of being like, you see this correction, you tell the kid, we ask questions like, why are their legs bent consistently on their rack handspring? Instead of, your legs are bent all the time and your back handspring fix it. Let's figure out why. Reflections aim to answer, what are you feeling when you tap for a giant? Not, you need to tap later on your giant. 
Um, the reflections aim to answer questions like, um, where are your thoughts when you're competing being? Other than you need to think about cues, or you need to think about this when you're competing. Like, what, where, where are you when you're competing that you keep following? So it's aiming to answer those kinds of questions. And so when you reflect, you reflect on two things. You reflect on feelings, meaning like physical feelings, like what does your body feel in this instance? Where, where, where is your body feeling this? What muscles are you using? The physical, or you reflect on the attitude, which is the emotional, psychological, like things that are happening. And then when you reflect on those two things, you empower that gymnast to make those decisions on the physical feeling and on the attitude. Okay, this is like my favorite story in gymnastics, and it's fine. You'll see Sarah later, if you guys come to the prehab presentation. Sarah was, um, this is like a straight up exact situation last year that I was just like, oh my God, this is working. <laughs> um, and so Sarah came in the season and was doing layout flyways, and she had really nice giants, she had really good layout flyways, there was no reason that she couldn't do it all back. Um, except that she was also kind of one of those people that like was very skittish. She was very nervous to learn new things, came from a park district background where it just like it wasn't natural to like progress things um, as in, a, in the way that I had coached in club. And also on the other end, I had only really ever taught double backs into a pit. And we don't have a pit at Lombard North. I had a spotting belt and an eight incher. So like, how was I going to get this kid to do this like, very inherently scary skill that she was more than capable of doing, but like, how am I gonna prepare myself? How is she gonna prepare herself? So I made it a very big intention to not say to her, like, we're gonna do double backs <laughs> like one day because I knew if that happened, she was gonna run away scared. Um, so instead, I intentionally, like two months before I needed her to do a double back, I briefly brought it up in dialogue. And this is kind of how it went. Anybody want to play Sarah with me? You can play Sarah with me. Okay. Hey, Sarah. You ever thought about competing a bars off or double back off bars one day? Not really. They seem so scary. They seem so scary. Dude, you're right. Like, they, are, they can be scary. However, like, you've shown the attention to detail and skill technique in your giants and flyways that would make this a good fit for you. But at the same time, I want you to learn gymnastics that you're interested in and confident in. What would you, would you like to chat more about before I make any decisions? Uh, sure, but I'm nervous. And I didn't bring it up again for weeks. I didn't bring it up again for weeks, but we planted the seed early, made sure that it wasn't something that Sarah had to do. The moment that you, cre I don't know, like maybe this is just me, but when my parents tell me to do something, I'm like, I'm gonna do the opposite thing. I don't want to do that. Like, I'm, I'm gonna do something completely different. So instead of saying, we're gonna do double backs because it made you, it's gonna give you this much more in your start value, you're gonna make it to state this way, blah, blah, blah. It was, here's what I, my thoughts are. What do you think? And more of that, like kind of empowering way. Okay, so I planted the seat. Didn't bring it up for a couple weeks. A couple weeks later, casually, I ask her, okay, so if I were to not coach you on a double back at all, didn't tell you what to do at all, what would your first instinct be? The reason I ask this question is a couple reasons. I want to know where her instincts are. I want to know where her psychology is. I want to know what her physical feelings are going to be if I just said the word double back. That gives me a lot of insight on how we're going to approach this. So what did Sarah say? Well, I would probably make my dimes faster and just do this. Motions head back, <laughs> pulling legs, and hope and pray. So you laugh. Why'd you laugh? Because <laughs> that's what they do. Because that's what they do, but we all know as coaches, right? Like, oh, don't do that in a double back. <laughs> like, okay. You don't want to grab your legs. You don't want to throw that head back. Or like, we all know what's going to happen. And it took so much out of me not to be like, oh, we don't want to do that. <laughs> like, so if I had said that to her, like, oh, we don't want to throw our head back, we don't want to grab our legs, what do you think would have gone through Sarah's head? I don't know how to do this at all, and I'm not ready right now. Exactly. We're already setting that kid up for failure because we're, we would be telling her, like, you know, your first instinct isn't right. And somebody who's scared, their first instinct isn't right, they're not going to want to do this. So 
Making it so that the skill is relatable is the best way to trick their first instinct. Okay? So I said, okay, well, holding myself back and saying, don't throw your head back, don't grab your legs. I made the skill relatable for her. Well, is there any other skill that you do naturally that relates to a double back? And Sarah's a very smart gymnast. She's a very smart gymnast. She was like, oh, back tuck. Easy. Some of your gymnasts might not connect those dots, trust me. Like, and I'm like, and you might have to describe what it is. Well, in a double back, I see that a gymnast flips backwards in a tuck position. What does that look like to you? Um, but she said back tuck. So right away, all of a sudden, I've gotten her to think about something that's easy for her and brought it into this new scary skill for her. Um, and so then I said, I totally agree. What muscles do you use in a back tuck? So what did I do just then? I reflected on the feeling, right? Reflected on that feeling. We're not even attach attacking the psychology point of view yet. We're reflecting on this feeling. So she's going to start analyzing her gymnastics on how she feels. So Sarah did a standing back on floor. She was like, I felt my legs activate. I felt my abs activate. Said, okay, great. You are on your way. She's all of a sudden thinking about what she's feeling. And then I asked her, because your legs are not going to activate in a double back flyer. I really wanted her to like get to this point that like what activates the double back. So I asked her, so now if we take that back tuck, we put it on bars, what do you feel? What are you going to use? What would she use, guys? Chair abs, right? So she said, I wouldn't have to jump. I'd use my abs. So I said, dude, you're crushing it. I encourage you to start paying attention to your abs now. So we still haven't even tried a back tuck. Or we haven't tried to double back. We haven't put it in the belt. We haven't even watched videos on it. All we've done is we've focused her psychology into reflecting on feelings. And so um, I encourage you to keep doing your layouts in practice and reflect on how you would want to use your abs to flip a double back. Once again, drop it. I don't want to force her into this. She has to have that seed planted. She has to want to do it if she's going to do it safely. So a few weeks later, without me even prompting, she came to me and said, what did my head do on the double back? That's when I knew we were ready to start doing double backs. Why? Because she's owning that skill. She's curious about the skill. She wants to do the skill now because she's thinking about it. And because she's reflecting on it and wanting to understand how it works. And so when somebody understands how something works, the more they're going to buy into learning how to do it. Okay. My next biggest thing with drills, We've all, we're all here, we're going to learn so many drills today, and my biggest thing with drills is there is no set progression of drills that is going to work for every single kid. It has to be tailored to kid, and I highly suggest opening the idea of collaboration with the kid, and what they are scared of, and what their strength level is. Talk to them about why we're doing drills. Make them understand what is happening, why we do drills, what is it going to cause further. And so um, when she started asking me those questions about double backs, I knew that she owned that skill. And she, she was interested, she was thinking critically and mentally preparing herself. And I didn't have to do any convincing at all. None at all. Like I said, this was like a breakthrough moment for me in coaching <laughs> because this is like the first time that this like, I like really tried this for a long time and it worked. And um, I was just there to support her as she figured out how to do double backs. So then we start trying the skill when the athlete gives you the go ahead. So this might be a verbal or a nonverbal cue. For me, it was verbal. Sarah was pretty like, this, Sarah was pretty good about coming to me one day and she actually straight up asked me, she's like, when do you want me to have this skill by? And I was honest with her, I was like, if you're asking me from a coach perspective, I would like it at this time because of this and this and this. And I said, but it doesn't matter what I think. You have to do the skill. And the moment I put that back on her, she left for a few days. So I think she went on like vacation or something. And she, she came back and she's like, okay, coach, I'm ready. I'm like, what are you, what are you ready for? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like, I'm, I'm ready to do a double back. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Uh, we put her in the belt for two practices. Girl had a double back with him within a week, safely off bars. 
Um, mostly because we had done the, the psychology prepping before we actually did the skill. And so it was one of those things that like we did the psychology prepping, then we did the drill prepping, and then it was just like the skill naturally happened without us having to force anything because we were ready here and we were ready here. Same. So you guys can talk in a small group or we can all talk in a big group, but like I'd love to like chat about this. What, when you look back at that kind of like dialogue, I want you to think about what language was used to help her reflect. And then what benefits did I as the coach gain from her taking ownership and making the decision here? And what benefits did Sarah gain by being given permission to take ownership? So you guys can talk amongst yourselves or you can include me, it doesn't matter. But does anybody have any ideas on any one of those questions? I really like that you kind of made her own it. I think that that's hard for gymnasts. I know that I've got a few in my gym that are like, I want you to tell me what to do. And I'm like, okay, but I want you to take ownership of what you're doing. And it's and it was it's kind of hard because then I turn and I say, I want you to do this. And they're like, I don't know. And it's like, well, you just told me that you wanted me to tell you what to do. So I kind of learned behavior. Yeah. So right? I like that you were able to kind of plant that seed. And I like that you were able to kind of watch it grow. Yeah, so like how, like as a coach, how did I benefit from that? At least it, it, you don't have to fight. You don't have to fight these gymnasts. You know how much less stress I have on this? Right. Like, I was just like, okay, you do it, don't work if you're ready. Yeah. I'm not gonna pressure you. Right. I will say, and I'll be like straight up transparent about this, I would say it was a slow happening. Mm -hmm. This was a two month project to get her to do a double back, but I mean, it, it's something that I had to plant the seed early and it took a long time and part of me was stressed because it was taking a long time, but did I have to fight it? No. What do you, what do you guys think like Sarah benefited in from having that ownership? I think she ultimately felt more confident in doing the skill because she understood how it worked and could process it more than just, like there's something to be said about putting more over a pit and letting kids quote unquote play and flip and try to figure it out versus what are you actually doing? You know, like what are you really thinking about, you know? Yeah, I mean, tell a double back to any kid, especially a high school kid, especially a kid that like, maybe isn't, wasn't like, just like rock star club kid, like, and say, okay, we're gonna do a double back. They're like, that's a big skill, that's scary. And like, they don't think about it. So like, being able to like, understand like how the machine works, before you actually play on the machine or try to fix the machine, like, is, I think, pretty critical. And then, is there any language in that dialogue that you guys, like, found that you thought was, like, you would try with your gymnast in general? I think you're giving her control of the whole situation. So if she's, if she's the one talking to the answer, yeah. No advice oh. given. No advice given. No. Never said, never gave any actual gymnastics correction. Which is interesting because it's like, because it's like, I I had to basically pretend like I wasn't the expert, and like that's a hard hat and a hard mindset to turn on, for sure. Especially when when gymnasts are used to their coach being like the mechanic, like you're saying, like that mechanic where they're like, you know, this is what you do, this is what you do, and, and they're coming from those club atmosphere and they're coming in and walking into our. <coughs> Okay, coach, tell me what to do. And it's, it's got to be it's not just hard mindset switch for us as coaches, but also as the gymnasts walking in. It's not easy. Expect something different. Exactly. Well, and I actually like always think about this with, yeah. as an adult. I have an issue with exercising where people aren't telling me what to do. Because I grew up in an atmosphere, in a gymnastics atmosphere, where they were like, do this, do this, do this. Here's your, here's your conditioning plan, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And so as an adult, I have a really hard time following an exercise program uh, independently because of that learned mindset. Yeah. And so think about it too, that we're not, we're not just like improving their gymnastics, we're improving their approach to, we're improving their approach to exercise in the long run and long past gymnastics and how they're going to start to take ownership of the things that they want to do and are motivated to do. But it's just, it's new to them to be given options, right? Like, I had a couple of your kids you know, over the summer, 
And Sorry. the idea <laughs> of saying, you know, they were so used to at the club, this is what you do, this is what you do. And then I walked in being a high school person and I was like, why? And they're like, what? I'm like, why do you have to do that? You hate this. Every single day you fight me over this. Why? Why don't you do these five other skills that are also high superiors and maybe you won't hate them as much. And the look on their face, like it's a totally new thing for them to be given that option. And I think all coaching and I think all, um, all training, all education is headed this way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think that like in the long run, it's, it's gonna take a while for this like giant generational shift on like how you approach these things. But um, like I said, I work for Noom and we don't give meal plans for nutrition exercise. We make people figure it out for themselves. And that's why it's a company that, um, that it's all, all about long lasting weight loss. It's not quick stuff. And so that's what I also tell the kids is like, I don't want you to just do a double back this year. I want you to do it this year and your junior year and your senior year. Like, it's not, it's not something I'm gonna teach you and then forget about it. And not something that I want you to learn for the sectional meet crazily. I want you to be able to do this in the long run safely. So, like, so that's that dialogue in like learning a new skill, but like you can also open this dialogue in current skills. Cause they're gonna obviously be coming to you with current skills. And this is another way that you can incorporate this reflection and my favorite line, and like Sarah and Katie, who you, like I said, if you come to the prehab, you'll see them. They used to make fun of me for this all the time because they would end a skill, and my go-to line was, what did you feel? What did you feel? And if they can't tell you what they felt, like you're like, do it again, think about it. What did you feel? Because how are we going to create a correction? How are we gonna get a kid to change a correction if they don't even feel that misstep in the first place? So when you ask them, what did you feel when you did that skill? My advice is get as much detail as possible. Lauren uh, was a gymnast of mine. She did a half half on vault. She had, she had real trouble blocking off the bar and um, getting that amplitude off of in the post flight. So I asked her one day, I said, what do, you, what do you feel? What's the first thing that you feel when you hit the ball? She's like, well, I feel my arms bend. Okay, when do you feel your arms bend? When they first get on the ball, okay. How, how bent do they feel? Do they feel a little bent or do they feel a lot of bent? She's like, my right arm feels a lot of bent, my left arm a little bent. I'm like, okay, okay. Um, do they feel bent any other place? Then right on the ball, get as much detail about what they feel. Cause then, and then don't give them a correction. Send them on their way. And then ask them the next turn. Did you feel anything different this time? So once again, I'm taking this expert hat off and letting them control the changes that happen. And um, this also kind of points you in the direction too, that like when you do feel ready to give them a correction, um, you'll know where their brain is inherently going, you know, and you can tailor your corrections to where their brain is probably going to fix quicker. So I had a lot of corrections on this vault for Lauren, but I knew that the best way that we were going to attack it is by talking about her arms, because that's what she was feeling inherently. Um, and so a template sentence to give a correction is, okay, sounds like you felt your arms bent on the pre-flight. I noticed that as a result, we're not getting a big enough block or get big enough amplitude off the ball. How would you change your body to fix that correction? So once again, you're putting the ownership on them to understand what the gymnastics looks like. You're relating it to what the gymnastics needs to be. And then they're in charge of making the change. So you don't get frustrated because they're making those changes. <laughs> like they're thinking about it. How does this work? Sorry, how does this work for maybe I'm thinking like of our freshmen coming in who don't have a lot of background knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I was trying to be generous. I, 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 right, I have a girl who insists it's not her fault, she can't feel her body, and why can't I change that? I, I'm like, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, would, I would also look at her, she's like, I don't know, I don't feel my body. I'm like, I don't know how to help you then. Like, <laughs> I, I think that's fair to say. Like, I, I mean, this is an this is an athletic sport where you have to have some body awareness, right? But, right? right. But so they've never, like, they have to go back to a more basic skill and be like, now tell me what you feel in that skill that Make it relatable. Yeah. Make it relatable. So if they're doing something complicated, 
take a step back. The front wheel is complicated. Right. I mean, I'm saying. Right. Then I wouldn't. Then I wouldn't. Honestly, right. like, I like I. I would be honest. I only worked with my varsity kids. So this, I know how it works with the varsity level, with the people that come in with knowledge in gymnastics. Um, and I'm once again, really, I guess more of the encouragement I have on the freshman kids is remember that it's each of them have a different gymnastics and like empower them to explore what their gymnastics is. Um, but like the correction giving, like strategy talk sesh might be better suited for your varsity athletes to start. Until it's like honed in on and you're like, I mean, I have a girl who cannot feel if her feet are pointed or not. Like, okay. Okay. So maybe uh, let's can not we do it on a straight jump. Like, we've like, started on a straight jump. Right. We've gone to a straight jump. Higher. We've gone to, yeah, we've gone to, and then it's just like, as soon as she gets literally past a tuck jump, like, how is this, like, and, like, I've been working on this for three years. So maybe, let, maybe, if she's not feeling it, if she's not feeling it, and she says, and then she says, that's not fair, I'm trying it. Ah. So, so once again, it's kind of this attitude of like, okay, if, if they're not feeling it, are they going to correct it? Probably not. But refocus. So refocus. One of my favorite things if people aren't pointing their feet is to say, jump higher. Because you can't jump higher if you're not pushing through your feet. Right? You can jump higher. They're going to automatically push through their feet, and they're not going to have to think about it. So redirect that psychology around, okay, I can't feel my feet. I'm not going to get her to change this correction on her feet. Like, but... We can make this feel better in a different way that will shoot, like that will hit two birds with one stone. Or redirect the psychology behind what pointing feet means. Because what pointing feet means is pushing through that foot all the way entirely to its full extension when you jump. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. When you're talking about freshmen, make sure that you come and see Annette's on how to make up the routine. Because it's, it's, you two are talking about totally different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you think, as much as you want them with pointed toes, you go, okay, that's a half a tenth. Right. Exactly. Focus, yeah. focus yeah. on something else. Right. 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 So um, I like to say out of the days of saying to your kids, straighten your legs and point your toes. Like, I, I, I don't think I said that a single time last year. Um, was straighten your legs and point your toes. And one of the reasons is I coached actually here full time for two years, where 40 hours a week I was coaching recreational kids. And I think I would dream myself saying, straighten your legs and point your toes, straighten your legs and point your toes, straighten your legs and point your toes. And I went actually crazy. Like it was bad. So reword it, redirect that psychology. Instead of saying your legs are like, instead of saying straighten your legs and point your toes, where you're giving them advice, you're telling them what to do, I would say, Katie, I noticed your back leg is bent on your straw. What do you want to focus on differently to make in the next turn to change that? Right? So I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not telling her to straighten her legs and point her toes, but I'm empowering that gymnast to make her own correction. I'm empowering her to think about the muscles that she uses to do that correction. And over time, you're not going to have to say as much. Um, and it's all about how it feels to them. So I think that is our time. And I got another session. So there is a whole other thing in here about affirmations. Um, there is a lot of information. If you have questions about anything, motivational interviewing or behavior change, like feel free to come and talk to me. I literally give trainings on that kind of stuff all day long. What? How do I contact you for questions? Contact me. My email is K-R-I-S-T-I-N. N O R D Q U I S T at gmail.com. You know what? I've got a quick question if we've got like 30 seconds. Yeah, we got 30 and seconds. And it might be more than a 30 second question, but as far as um, all of this, as it comes to mental blocks, mm -hmm. how, how, mm -hmm. how do you, uh, I mean, spell mental blocks? So mental blocks just don't happen anymore because, like, with that new skill thing, um, when they're approaching those new skills, they're understanding what's happening the whole time, right? They're psychologically ready. They're understanding the mechanics of it. And so those mental blocks just don't exist because if something happens, it's not like my brain doesn't know what's happening. They're very aware of what's going on. So those things just don't happen. Right. Because the fear is inherent and they're very aware of what their mind is doing. Yeah. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thank you guys so much.